everybody, welcome to March. I hope you had a great February and now you are ready to jump on into March. We are starting off our first project in March, celebrating St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day is coming up on March 17th. And one symbol that is very popular, like you have learned watching some of the other videos about St. Patrick's Day, is the shamrock, this three leaf clover. We are going to be starting with a stencil of a shamrock for our project. You will need to create your own stencil. I made mine just on a piece of um, thinner cardboard, but you can really use any sort of thicker paper, like a piece of cardstock or even a a cereal box would be a perfect perfect like thickness of cardboard for this um, if you do not have your own shamrock you're welcome to print out the shamrock that I have provided for you on Schoology and you can cut out this shamrock to use as your stencil you may need to trace it over onto some cardboard so you have that thicker page but that will give you the shape of the shamrock and if you don't have access to a printer I'll quickly show you how easy it is to create a shamrock. So it is a three leaf clover and each of the leaves kind of looks like a heart. You can see that top of the heart shape and it kind of disappears in the center here for the bottom of the heart. Easy way to think about it is start with a heart. So one curve, two. So I'm gonna stop here, turn my page. I'm going to do a heart over here, touching that heart side to where I left off. Do another curve and leave an open gap. And then I'm gonna finish my last heart here. I'm going to do my last one, two curves. And don't forget to find a spot to add in that curving line for your stem. So if you need to draw your own shamrock to use as a stencil, that is an easy way to draw a shamrock. It's just three hearts placed together and a stem. So once you have your shamrock ready to go, your stencil, again, make sure it's on something a little bit thicker. Cereal box, chip box would be a perfect thickness for this. You're gonna wanna keep it in the center of your page. And I even like to take a piece of tape that I roll up and stick that in the center. So that way it really holds my shamrock in place on my paper. We're going to be playing with some positive and negative space for this project, as well as doing some review of color mixing. We're creating the rainbow because as you know, leprechauns hide their pot of gold at the bottom or end of a rainbow. So we're gonna be creating a rainbow around our shamrock. Now, an easy thing you can do is you can use your finger or a paintbrush for this project, or if you have these tools at home, you can use this as well. This is a clothes pen, a wooden clothes pen, and these are just pom-poms. What I'm going to do is clamp that pom-pom into my clothes pen, and this is going to act like a dot little paint dauber, so I can get some paint and I can pat it on. So if you don't have one of these, if you don't have a paintbrush, you can always just use your finger. I'm going to use these and I have multiple pom-poms because as I get done with one, I'm going to toss it and get a new one. So we're going to do our rainbow order. Rainbow is Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Indigo is just kind of like a mix of the blue and the purple together. But we're gonna skip past our indigo. We're really worried about just getting our red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple on our shamrock paper. And we're doing some color mixing review because as you can see on my palette, I only have the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. So I'm gonna start off first with my first rainbow color, which is red. So I'm going to use my little tool that I've created with my pom-pom. I'm going to get some red on my pom-pom and I'm going to use it to pat to create color. Holding down my shamrock so it doesn't move, so you can see like the stem is kind of floating up here, so I'm gonna hold it down, and I'm going to pat some red around my shamrock first. And I'm gonna go all the way around the shamrock, just like this. And now that I've gone all the way around my shamrock, since this is my first ring of color all the way around it, I am actually good to go ahead and peel up my shamrock stencil. Pull it up and check it out. Let me grab that last little bit of tape too. Check your hands, make sure your hands are clean so you're not leaving behind fingerprint. Pulling slowly. Wow, that looks awesome already. Check it out, I have some negative space now, which is my empty space where my shamrock shape is. And I have some positive space that I've started. And ooh wee, would you look at that awesome texture made by our pom-pom. It has that really nice, soft, fuzzy edge and that looks so cool. So now we're ready to move on to our next rainbow color. After red, we have 
orange. But remember, we are only using our primary colors. So how in the world can I get orange when I only have red, yellow, and blue? What do you think? I sure hope you remember that we can mix together our primaries and we can create our secondaries. If I mix together yellow and red, I will create the color orange. So let's try it out. I already have some red on my brush here from my pom-pom um, that I did with the red around my shamrock. So I'm just gonna use this as well. I'm gonna take what red I have left. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this in with my yellow and see if I can get an orange. If it's not dark enough, if it's not the same exact orange that I'm thinking in my brain, I can always go back and add some more red. So let me mix it around real quick. I don't know about you guys, but this is pretty close to the exact color orange I was thinking. So now that I have my orange that I want to use, I'm gonna go ahead and create my next ring of color around my shamrock. So all I'm gonna do is just go right up next to the red that I did, and I'm gonna start patting in my ring of orange. And I'm gonna go all the way around the shamrock. So check it out, now I have my two colors of my rainbow started. I have red first and my next color is orange. You may even notice some spots where your red and your orange is kind of overlapping a little bit together and it's starting to make the tertiary color of red orange, super cool. I'm done with this pom pom, it's now had plenty of use so it's time to chunk that one. So I'm going to trash it and go ahead and get a new pom pom. So I'm going to clip in a new one. Again, if you're just using your fingers, just rinse your fingers off, make sure you are cleaned up, ready to go for the next color. And our next color is yellow. So I already have just yellow paint on its own, but we cannot mix and make the primary. So I'm just going to refresh my palette with some yellow paint. I'm gonna do the same thing, getting some yellow on my pom-pom, and I'm gonna go around my shamrock to make a ring of yellow. Woo, this is looking so neat. Did you know that the first three colors in the rainbow, red, orange, and yellow, are our warm colors? So we can start dividing our colors into different color families. And our first one we're looking at right now is called the warm colors. It has red, orange, and yellow in it. And you can even see in some spots where our yellow and our orange started to overlap, it was starting to make the tertiary color of yellow, orange. So we have lots of rainbow happening already, but we're missing the back half of the rainbow. We have red, orange, and yellow. Now we got to get on green, blue, and purple. So if we're looking at my paint palette, I have red, yellow, and blue. How in the world can I create the next color of green? Give you a second to think about it. I sure hope you were on the right track and remembering that we can mix yellow and we can mix blue together to make the color green. So since I already have yellow on my pom-pom and you may still already have yellow on your finger if you're doing your fingerprints, I'm gonna go ahead and just take a little bit of my blue and mix it over here with my yellow until I see green. Wow, that is a perfect green for St. Patty's Day. If your green is a little too dark, remember you can always lighten it up by adding in some more yellow. If it's a little too light, you can always make it more green by adding in some blue. So I'm pretty happy with my green, so I'm gonna go ahead and go over to my paper and start patting in my ring of green. Our rainbow is growing. Check it out, look how cool we now have red, orange, yellow, and green. So we're starting to get those cool colors on our shamrock. And you can see how big it's getting too. I am working on a large sheet of paper. So if you don't have big paper at home, maybe instead of having a shamrock that's so big, so you could see like my shamrock was like the size of my hand. Maybe you made your shamrock a little bit smaller so it could fit on a smaller piece of paper. All right, our next color, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of our icky used pom-pom. Freshen up a new one. How about we add in a pink one this time? We are now ready to move on to our next color in the rainbow. We have red, we have orange, we have yellow, we have green. What's next? Hope you remember, Roy G. Bib. Grab my pom-pom, secure it onto my clip. Scoop up some blue onto my pom-pom. So again, just sticking a little bit in there, not swirling it too much. I don't need it to get on the top of my pom-pom. And I'm gonna go ahead and pat around my blue. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I am loving the texture that this is making. It looks so fuzzy and fluffy. 
So now we are ready to start our next ring of color. We have red, we have orange, yellow, green, blue. Last but not least, we are going to be jumping into our purple. Now, again, remember, we're kind of skipping past our indigo for this project. We're really worrying about just getting our six main rainbow colors, which is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. I don't have purple on my palette, so how can I make purple? I'm gonna go and clip in my next pom-pom and I'm going to mix up my purple by adding just a little bit of my blue into my red. I'm gonna swirl that around until I see a purple. You may notice purple is probably the trickiest color to try to mix and make. Sometimes your purple can lean more into like a red violet where it has a little bit too much red in it. Sometimes it can get really dark and it looks a little bit um, like it's like a midnight blue is how I like to describe it. Maybe it has too much blue in it. So the more you practice mixing around your purples, you can really see how those colors can start to change. So like my purple just went from being a little bit more on that red violet side to now being a little more true purple. So practice, if you don't love the first mix of purple you got, try again. Once you have a purple that you are happy with, let's go ahead and add in our ring of purple. All right, check it out. We have now completed our entire rainbow all the way around our shamrock. Um, my purple, it looks a little dark on my screen, but it is a purple. Let's see if I can get a good picture of it once it dries. So you can see our beautiful rainbow shamrock. Maybe if you leave this out, a leprechaun just might come visit you and bring you some gold. So I hope you guys enjoyed reviewing our rainbow colors, remembering how to mix together our primary colors to make our secondary colors. And of course, we talked about it last time and just one more reminder positive and negative space so we're looking at the empty part where the heart is so that is negative space remember the negative space think of it like your empty space and then your positive space is this beautiful rainbow all the way around your shamrock hope you guys have a great st patrick's day and i will see you next time